Hey friends, welcome to Souls on Fire. I'm so glad you're here with us today. My name is Brittany Wallenhorst and I am your host for this show. Um, like I said, I'm so excited that you're here. Um, before I get into today's episode and just the content that I'm going to be talking about today, I do just want to let you guys in on what Souls on Fire is, why I created it, and what its mission is. So uh, as you can see in the title, um, it's called Souls on Fire. So that's essentially what the mission of Souls on Fire is. It is to set your soul on fire. I, I started this mission about four and a half, five months ago, and I have a community via Facebook and via Instagram, and it's for faithful women, and it's for all things um, motivation and inspiration. Um, I was in a very dark time in my life about seven months ago. I actually just moved back to America from Sydney. And I, like I said, I was just in such a dark time in my life. And I really just needed that motivation and that inspiration in my life. And I, I definitely received it from my friends, but I felt like there was still a void in my life. And I just, I felt like I just really wanted a community of women cheering me on. And I felt like that's what other women needed as well. So I went ahead and I created um, to now what is Souls on Fire. And like I said, I've been doing this for about five months now, and it is a global movement. It's turned into an amazing global movement. And we have currently over 650 women in the group. And it is just a group where we motivate and inspire each other. And like I said, it's for women of faith. And if you are listening today, and if you are not a woman of faith, or maybe you're a man listening to it, this, that is totally fine. Um, I just, I have gone through a lot of hardships in my life and Jesus has really been there for me and that is why I have centered this around um, faith so like I said if you are not there today that is totally fine come as you are this is still going to be a show where we are talking about motivation and inspiration so if you just need to get your soul filled with the motivation and some inspiration you are definitely in the right place so the mission is to get your soul set on fire so what I found out is that people get up, they go to work every day and then they're not living they're not living happy. They just they're not they're not happy in their lives. And and I was there. I kept going from job to job to job. And I even moved countries a couple times. Like I really didn't know what I want to do and, and my soul wasn't set on fire. And I got to a point in my journey when I came back to America that I was just like, God, why am I here? What what am I doing back in America? Why am I here on earth? And he really put this desire in my heart to motivate and inspire people around the world and it has honestly set my soul on fire and I am so excited to be here with you guys and I am so excited to just share this journey with you guys and to help get your soul set on fire just like my soul has been set on fire so so like I said that's that's the mission of it and so there's actually two parts of souls on fire so the first is how do we find that uh, fire in our soul and the second part of it is hey, friend, you know what, I I've, I've found the fire in my soul, and that's great, and I'm living with that purpose, and I'm living with that passion, but how do I, so sometimes I wake up in, the, you know, sometimes I wake up in the morning, but I don't have that motivation, and I don't have that inspiration to keep going, whether it's a job, or maybe it's the gym, or, you know, whatever, whatever you find your passion in, or whatever your purpose is, sometimes I just, I just don't have that motivation and inspiration, and that is, again, why Souls on Fire was created, just so we could have a community of people motivating and inspiring and collaborating with one, with one another to create that sense of community and to create that sense of belonging that we do have a purpose and we do have a passion. So each week on this show, I have hand-selected guests, and I'm, I'm even going to be talking myself about some hardships in my time as, or in my life as well. Um, so each week, I've hand-selected guests, and they're going to talk about their own area of expertise, what they what they have gone through in their lives, and now they're living with their soul on fire. I feel like on social media a lot, people really portray the good things of their lives, and people don't portray the necessarily bad times in their lives. Um, so that's what I want Souls on Fire to be. I, I want to normalize talking about the hardships in our life, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So without further ado... I'm going to go straight into today's content, guys. I'm just going to give it straight to you today. And this is a show where it's going to be very honest, and I'm going to be very vulnerable with you guys, and my guests will be as well. Um, so today's episode. So I'm going to talk to the person today, whether you're male, female, whoever you are. I want to talk to the person today that is in a prison. 
And I know it kind of seems kind of dark. Oh, my gosh, Brittany, we're just talking about having your soul set on fire. And now you're talking about prisons. Oh, my goodness. How does this tie into having your soul set on fire? So if we, if we look at the word prison, it's being locked behind bars, and you, you just can't seem to get set free. And there are different kinds of prisons that we can be confined in in our lives, whether it be a relationship. Hey, maybe you're in a relationship Maybe you're dating someone. Maybe you are married and you, you just, you can't get free. Maybe you're, you know, maybe you're getting abuse in a relationship, you know, ver verbally or physically. It's not, unfortunately, it's, it's not a good prison to be in if you are in some sort of relationship prison. Maybe you are in some sort of prison in your own mind. Maybe you just keep having these negative thoughts and emotions about yourself and you just don't know how to get free from it. Maybe you just, you, you don't like the way you look or or feel when you wake up in the morning and you just you can't you can't get past that and if, and if we can't get past these things then unfortunately we're not going to live our life fully with intention and purpose and you know there, there's so many different prisons that we can be in and I, I kind of just jotted the three down so like I said the first being relationship the first being mind and the third being the job the reason I wrote these three down is because I unfortunately have been a victim in all three of these and I'm sure there's more that I personally have been a victim in and I know that there are more prisons that we can be in as well and there's different that people are listening to as well. Um, yeah, so maybe we're in a job a job prison. Maybe we just we've been in this job, man, whether it's whether it's six months or whether it's ten years and it was just like, oh my gosh, why did I take this job? I literally feel like I'm going to a prison every day. And like, I'm just really not happy when I wake up in the day. So I'm going to be talking about um, a prison that I was in for about um, a good four and a half years in my life that I have just been recently set free from. And I want to go um, straight into the Bible actually right now. And I want to talk about um, a verse that really hit me when I was going in deep to this deep in this material and when I was really studying for what I was going to be talking to you on, on the show about. So if we go to Isaiah 45, uh, Isaiah 45, 2 through 3, it says, I will go before you and level the uneven places. I will shatter, I will shatter the bronze doors and cut the iron bars in two. So let's go back to that prison word. So we're in prison. We're, 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 we're locked behind these bars. And in the Bible, it says, God, God is saying, I will shatter the bronze doors and cut the iron bars in two. So if we give it to God and if, and if, we, if we just give him that prison confinement that we're in, he will, he will knock down those barriers. And, and, and you guys can knock down those barriers together. And, and he will set me free. And I'm going to talk about how I got set free as well. And it goes on to say, I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches in secret places. So, of course, we're always going to be in these dark places, but how do we get out of these dark places? So, so, that, you know, so that you know that I am, I am the Lord. And it goes on um, to verse 5. It says, I will strengthen you though you, don't, though you do not know me. So the Lord will strengthen you. The, the Lord will strengthen you during this time in in specific confinement and in prison that we are in. So, like I said, if you, maybe you don't believe in God today and maybe you're not in that place, that's okay. You know, whatever you believe in, maybe you believe in the universe. Maybe you just, like, have some sort of friend that is helping you out with this. Out with this. Hey, you know what, that's totally fine. Like I said, please come as you are. So, um, I just want you to remember I will strengthen you because I'm going to go back into that um, a little bit uh, towards the end. So um, I want to go into a personal story here. Um, I, I spoke about me being in a prison uh, for the past four and a half years, and I'm going to be honest with you, and, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I've been kind of toying with uh, telling you guys, but like I said, this, this show is all about being vulnerable, and if, if I can't be my true self with you, then... How are you guys going to set your soul on fire, right? So I have been in a relationship prison for the past four and a half years. And it is such a crazy story, guys, because it's like I, I wasn't 
in, I wasn't physically in the relationship, but I was still like confined in the relationship. If we put like quotations around the word relationship. So what happened is I was, I was in a foreign country about four and a half years ago and um, I met this guy, um, quote unquote, met this guy via um, just a dating site and we became talking and we kind of became really good friends online. And I ended up leaving the foreign country, um, unfortunately not getting the chance to meet him. It, it, it really didn't work out. And uh, we went back and forth talking when I moved back to, to America from this foreign country, like I said, about four and a half years ago. And it got to the point where we, so we talked for about six months when I got back from America. And then it like turned into like full on ghost mode. And I'm sure some of you can like raise your hand. Oh my gosh, girl, like I've been there. Like I know the whole ghosting story. I know the whole, the whole ghosting situation. Um, so yeah, I was ghosting. I was like, oh my gosh, like what the heck? I've been talking to this guy for six months. And like suddenly he just like reappeared again. So it's like, and it just, it just kept happening for like the past four and a half years. So we would talk and then he would fall off the face of the earth and we would talk and I, he would fall off the face of the earth and it would, it would just keep being in this cycle. And it turned into, like I said, me being in basically a relationship prison and it got to the point in my life where it was, it was so, it was really embarrassing for me to talk about it. And I'm, I'm sure that some of you are listening to this and you're like, oh my gosh, like there are some things that I, I'm very embarrassed to talk about as well. And it got to the point where I felt like I couldn't even talk to anyone about this because I kept getting judged for it. And it, it really stopped me from living life with purpose and living life with intention and living with my life living my life with my soul on fire. And that's why Souls on Fire is so important to me. It's because I was locked in a prison for four and a half years, guys, and I couldn't get free. And that, that's why this mission is so important to me. And that's why I'm doing this. And that's why I'm telling you guys my story. I was so hopeless. I, 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 did, I did a lot of negative self-talk. You know, what's, what's wrong with me? Why can't I get out of this prison? Why... Why doesn't he like me? Why, you know, why, why, why am I doing this to myself? And every time I did that, people would just keep judging me. And I just, I felt so stupid and I, I felt so embarrassed for letting myself go through this for the past four and a half years. And um, it got to a point where, like I said, I recently just came back to America about seven months ago and I ended up changing my mindset completely when I got back to America. I, I changed who I who I followed on Instagram. I, I changed who I who I friended on Facebook because it's like I just I, I, I couldn't live in this prison anymore. And I'm just like, how am I gonna get myself free? And there's a couple reasons why I didn't let myself do this. Like one, because it's like I was craving that attention and because I, I didn't think that I could get it from anyone else. I didn't think that like I or God could like give me that attention. And I just I just, I really didn't know how to get out of the prison. I, like I said, I just, I felt so embarrassed. And it, it's not until recently, it actually happened about three or four months ago, I was on a confidence call coaching and we were talking about souls on fire and, and she said, well, hey, Brittany, what, what are some struggles in your business? And started talking about some struggles in my business and she said, well, is there, is there anything else you'd like to talk about? And I said, well, well, I guess I said, well, this is, this is kind of crazy, but you know, it's, it's really hindering me from, from going forward and forward in souls on fire because what it came down to is I was locked in this prison for so long that I, I didn't, I didn't trust anyone. I was so scared when people wouldn't message me back. Um, like I said, because I was, I was in that prison for so long. I was, I was scared when people didn't message me back. I was scared that, that no one would like me. And that's why, Souls on Fire didn't happen until it did and until I finally got set free from this. And, and I told her that. I said, I said, I, there are certain things that I want to create for Souls on Fire, but I said, I said, I can't. I said, because I, I am so scared that people aren't going to like it. I'm, I'm scared that it, it's not going to be the way that I want it to be. Like, what if I message someone about souls on fire? Hey, you know, I'd love to welcome you to the group, but what if they don't respond to me? Like, what, what if they don't like me? And 
And and what this girl told me is it's honestly what what set me free from it and what has helped me be set free from it. And I'm, I'm going to tell you the same thing that she told me because I, I really feel like.